Welcome to my channel. I appreciate every single person that subscribes to my channel. I've got almost 380 subscribers now, which is just mind blowing to me. I don't, I don't know how this happens, but obviously people are appreciating what I'm doing. So I'll just keep going. I want to thank you for liking my videos. I want to thank you for commenting on, and I especially want to thank you for sharing them. I, I really do appreciate it. I, I can't express that enough. I thank you. I'm thankful for every single person that comes and watches my videos, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from. So thank you very much. Tonight, I want to talk about something that's been on my heart for a long time. It is the reason why you're seeing these types of things today. BLM admits it isn't proud of a deleted post showing a paragliding terrorist. Yeah. Um, some terrorists slaughtered innocent people for no reason other than hatred, other than Satan driving them. And BLM thought it would be nice to post a post about that that showed one of the Palestinian terrorists paragliding into Israel so that he could kill people. A Cornell professor called the Hamas terror attack exhilarating and energizing. Think about that. Murdering babies is exhilarating and energizing. Another professor who's at the Chicago Art Institute called Israelis pigs, savages, and excrement and said, may they all rot in hell. Gee, I wonder where his sympathies lie. And at Harvard, students scrambled to take back their support for a letter that blamed Israel, blamed Israel for the attack. Terrorists illegally crossed their border, went into their kibbutzes and murdered innocent people and children. And it's Israel's fault. Where does this kind of logic come from? We even have this in our Congress. Look at this. Rashida Tiab or Talab or whatever the heck her name is. I can't pronounce it. And she's not the only one. <clears throat> Ilhan Omar. As soon as the explosion occurred at the hospital, the automatic knee-jerk reaction was the Israelis, Israelis did it. There was no, no pause to say, wait a minute, we don't really know what happened. So you've got this way of thinking that's permeated our society in education, in legislation, in every part of our society. And students are being taught this stuff every day. And where does all this come from? How did we get to this point in America where people are supporting baby killers? Well, it started long before the Vietnam War, but the Vietnam War was what really got it accelerated. You know what happened during the Vietnam War? Patriotic Americans enlisted to go over and fight the communists in Vietnam. And other people decided, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to support our country. I'm not going to fight the communists. And a lot of those people ended up as professors at colleges. So while those of us who enlisted were away fighting a war, back in at home in the US, the communists were infiltrating our educational system, infiltrating our film and industry system, infiltrating everything. This didn't just start in the Vietnam War, but the Vietnam War accelerated it. If I'm sure that you've heard of McCarthy and what they call the Red Scare. <clears throat> and according to this article, McCarthy was disproven and he was shamed and embarrassed and driven out of politics. 
Well, what really happened was, as they frequently do, the communists managed to commit a tremendous propaganda coup. They managed to convince the world that Joseph McCarthy was lying. Turns out he was not. Turns out that he was right. But that doesn't matter because what matters is what people believe. And what people believe is what the communists feed them. They are masters at lying. They're masters at propaganda. They are masters at creating narratives and changing the meaning of words and the use of words to support their cause. You're not pro-abortion, you're pro-choice. You see the difference? That's what they do. But you have to understand, communists kill a lot of people. They always have and they always will. When they take over a country, they slaughter the population. 150 million people have died. Let me repeat that. 150 million people have died in communist countries due to the communist programs that they inflict on their own people. They get rid of everyone who may have the slightest inclination to fight against them. In Cambodia alone, they killed 21% of the population. To save money on bullets, they actually grabbed children by the legs, by the feet, and swung them against trees to bash in their heads to kill them. That's what communists do. But you go to universities and they'll tell you how wonderful socialism is and how utopian it is and how everyone will be equal. Well, when you look in China, do you think the Chinese are equal to Mao? Do you think they're equal to Xi Jinping? <laughs> Come on. The only difference between capitalism and communism is that in capitalism, everyone has a chance to become wealthy. In communism, only the party apparatchiks and the people at the very top will ever get that opportunity. The rest, well, you just have to eat whatever scraps are available to you. You see, when the Vietnam War started, protests started among peace activists and leftist intellectuals. That's what they call them, leftist intellectuals. They were pro-Marxists. I don't know how old you are. A lot of you youngsters probably are not even aware of this. But during the Vietnam War, the protesters were carrying North Vietnamese communist flags and rooting for North Vietnam to win the war. Where do you think they got those ideas from? They got them from the communists. You see, there's two ways that you can look at life. You can either believe in God, who's the creator of the heavens and the earth, or you can believe in man. Communism is a belief in man. Communism is the belief that the state will take care of you, will take care of all your needs. Christianity is a belief that God will take care of your needs. That's the only difference between the two. Marxism is just as much of a religion as Christianity is. They just don't want to admit it. And look what happens when, when this gets done. This talks about how Black Lives Matter Matters was receiving backlash because they were branded as Marxist. They weren't branded as Marxist. Look at this. In a recently surfaced 2015 interview, one of the three Black Lives Matter co-founders declared that she and another co-founder, that's two-thirds of the co-founders, are trained Marxists. That's a quote. So how is that branding? <laughs> that's just telling the truth about them. But you say, we can't do that. Look at this paragraph. These days, Marxism usually means analyzing social change through an economic lens. 
with the assumption that the rich and the poor should become more equal. <laughs> uh, that's what Marxism is? No. Marxism is a belief that the capitalist system and that a belief in God is evil and it needs to be eradicated from the face of the earth. And when I say eradicated, that means killing people. That's what it means. Okay? There is no question about it. They've killed 150 million people in communist countries since they started doing communism. But you see, every once in a while we get someone who comes out of a system like that and tells the truth. Here's a, uh, a KGB defector who, back in 1984, predicted what would happen in America. And what did he say? He said that the KGB had sent people into the United States, what they call them moles, okay? And their purpose was to undermine the United States, to create ideological subversion. Quote, what it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, their country. He called the process the great, great brainwashing, and he said the first, station, the first stage is called demoralization, and it takes 15 to 20 years to achieve. <clears throat> demoralization means changing the minds of people so that they adhere to Marxist-Leninist values. I'll put all these links in the description. You can read all this for yourself. You can do the research yourself, but so few people do that I felt compelled to bring this up. They're programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind even if you expose them to authentic information. Ring any bells? You ever talk to a leftist who absolutely would not listen to the truth no matter how many facts you gave them? There you go. They've been programmed to think that way. Even if you prove that white is white and black is black, you still not, cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. He says the process is irreversible. Nothing is irreversible. With God, you can change anything. Okay, so he's wrong about that. But he's right that it is irreversible in many people because they don't want to know the truth. They're not interested in the truth. They're completely sold out to the Marxist idea of the proletariat, of the common man running the country, which never happens. Who runs Russia right now? The common man? Who runs China? Who runs Cuba? Who runs every communist nation in the world? Not the common man. The common man suffers under communism worse than he ever suffers under capitalism. At least in capitalism, he has a chance. Okay? He says, as I mentioned before, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to access, assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Even if I shower him with information, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him a concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he receives a kick in his fan bottom. You know, I have often said through the years that the fastest way to turn a liberal into a conservative is to break into his home, kill his children, and rape his wife in front of him. All of a sudden, he'll find his morals and he'll want to have justice. But you know what? Nowadays, <laughs> there are some people that even that wouldn't change them. It's, it's stunning to me how completely, absolutely demoralized, to use this man's word, some Americans are. And the third stage is called crisis. He says it'll take up to six weeks to send a country into crisis. Well, We've been in crisis for a lot longer than that, and we haven't been turned over yet. The reason is because of the way America was created. 
the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the beliefs that Americans have in America and in the American dream and in the American system. So it's taking a lot longer than they thought, but they're hard at work to get it turned. They're hard at work to create a crisis that will cause the country to collapse. And then when it collapses, guess what happens? They take over and they kill every single person that doesn't walk and stand with them. Back in the 1960s, they had groups that were against the United States, like the Students for Democratic Society. See, they always use these wonderful names that sound so wonderful, but the truth behind them is evil. And uh, there were some people in that group that actually were recorded by the FBI talking about what it would take to turn the United States into a Marxist country. And one of the persons in that uh, group said, and I can't remember his name now, uh, but he said that it would take killing, killing 20% of Americans to turn the country around. 20%. And he said that without batting an eye. You know what the guy's doing now? Writing books for educators. He's very well known in the colleges as a man who teaches teachers how to teach. You get it? You now understand why our teachers are teaching Marxism? Because that's what they're being taught. <clears throat> it's all part of a big plan. And the only thing that can stop it is God. The country has to turn back to God. Every individual has to turn back to God. That's the only way it's ever going to be stopped. And if not, then America goes down the tubes. It's just that simple. America will go down the tubes if we don't turn it around. And we will become a communist country. Mark my words. I'm not lying. I'm not making it up. I'm as serious as a heart attack. That's what is on the horizon for us if we don't turn it around. So we have to fight. We have to fight with every available tool that we have. The most important one is prayer. But we also need to get involved in our local governments and in our state governments and in our national government and then get involved with our neighbors and get people to understand what's at stake. And if we can do that, we have a chance. We have a chance to save America. If we don't do that, it's over over. Yeah, I know. You don't believe it. You think, oh, no, I don't think it's that bad. Yes, it is. You need to understand Satan is behind this and he's the God of this world and he can do whatever he wants unless people who believe in God stand up and fight against him. As always, I pray that you will prosper that you'll be in health and that you'll live a long life and that God will keep you safe. And I pray that he will do the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you're anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you'll make your request be made known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.